Hello, I'm David Kerr, and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. Pope Francis says that the newly beatified Italian teenager Carlo Acutis shows young people that true happiness is, quote, found in putting God first and serving him in our brothers and sisters. The Holy Father made his comments the day after the 15-year-old, who died of leukemia in 2006, was declared blessed during a ceremony at the Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi in Umbria. The beatification was presided over by Cardinal Agostino Vellini, the former Vicar General of the Diocese of Rome. Also present were Blessed Carlo's father, Andrea, and his mother, Antonia. They listened as Cardinal Vellini praised the way their son, quote, used the internet in the service of the gospel to reach as many people as possible. Blessed Carlo Acutis was born in London in 1991, but lived most of his short life in Milan. From an early age, he was noted for his piety and also for his prodigious computer skills. In fact, he notably combined both passions when he created an online database of Eucharistic miracles from around the globe. In February of this year, the Vatican authorised a miracle attributed to Blessed Carlo, which related to the healing of a Brazilian boy from a rare congenital disease of the pancreas. It was that miracle which paved the way for this month's beatification. Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for us. The President of Italy has bestowed one of the country's highest honours upon the late Father Roberto Malmesini. The 51-year-old priest was stabbed to death by a homeless man in the northern city of Como last month. Awarding the posthumous gold medal for civil merit, President Sergio Mattarella said that Father Malmesini displayed, quote, an exceptional Christian commitment at the service of the church and civil society. Father Malmesini was well known in Como for his work helping immigrants and the homeless. His alleged killer, a Tunisian man with mental health problems, turned himself into the police after the attack, although it's reported that he has since withdrawn his confession. Meanwhile, an Italian missionary priest held captive by Islamist militants in the African country of Mali for over two years has finally been released. 59-year-old father Pierluigi Macali was abducted by an armed group of jihadists from Niger in September 2018. Up until then, he'd been working with his religious order, the Society of African Missions, within the Malian Diocese of Niemi. There, he helped with evangelization, training farmers and helping schools and medical clinics. Last Thursday, the government of Mali announced via Twitter that Father Macali had finally been released, along with three other hostages. They include a French humanitarian worker, a Malian politician and an Italian tourist. The two Italians were last seen together in a 23-minute video released by their abductors in April of this year. A leading Nigerian bishop has denounced the country's president as being guilty of nepotism. Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka of the Northwestern Diocese of Sokoto made his comments upon the 60th anniversary of Nigeria gaining its independence from Britain. He recalled how President Mohamedou Buhari came to power in 2015, promising to end corruption, poverty, division and terrorism in Nigeria. Five years later, and the president's primary ideology is now nepotism, says Bishop Kuka, alleging that 85% of key government positions during that time have been handed to northern Muslims. Such patterns of behaviour, says Bishop Kuka, have seen the country's constitutional principles of equity, fairness and egalitarianism, quote, assaulted and diminished by President Buhari. To the US now, where the Archbishop of San Francisco has offered a special blue mass for the Californian city's first responders. The mass was held outdoors in the plaza of the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Assumption as part of the National Faith and Blue weekend. In attendance were members of the fire brigade, law enforcement, paramedics, emergency first responders and their families. In his homily, Archbishop Salvatore Cordelioni said that just as God brings order from chaos in the universe, so first responders bring order from chaos in our communities. He also prayed for the repose of the soul of Jason Cortez, a 42-year-old city firefighter who died last week while attending a training drill. As part of the ceremonies, Archbishop Cordelioni blessed the badges of those present and also distributed blessed medals depicting St. Michael the Archangel. The tradition of the Blue Mass for first responders began in Washington, D.C. back in 1934 and has since spread across the United States and beyond. The Catholic Church in India has spoken up against the arrest of an elderly Jesuit priest accused of having links with Maoist insurgents. 83-year-old Father Stan Swamy was arrested on October the 8th in the city of Ranchi in the eastern state of Jharkhand. He's accused of having helped to provoke a riot 
in the village of Bhima Corrigan in the western state of Maharashtra in January 2018. The unrest resulted in one death, 30 police officers being injured and over 300 arrests. Father Swami protests his innocence and has now been remanded in custody until a court hearing scheduled for October the 23rd. The Bishops' Conference of India, however, are demanding his immediate release. Finally, the Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli is set to release a new album based upon the virtues of faith, hope and charity. Entitled Believe, the recording will be released next month. The 62-year-old blind performer says that faith, hope and charity are, quote, the three extraordinary keys to giving meaning and completeness to the lives of every one of us. The album includes the singer's own musical setting of the Hail Mary and the Our Father. Faith, hope and charity are often referred to as the theological virtues, meaning that they are good dispositions or habits which emanate from God. In April of this year, Andrea Bocelli performed a live stream concert on YouTube from Milan's Duomo Cathedral. Entitled Music for Hope, it proved to be the most watched live classical concert in YouTube history. To date, it's been viewed by over 41 million viewers. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more headlines from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.